And so if we live in forgetfulness, we will not be able to live each moment of our life deeply. Or, as Han crystallizes it, he's so good at taking these nebulous concepts and making them understandable. When we have a toothache, we know that not having a toothache is a wonderful thing. <laughs> he encourages us not to wait until the toothache strikes to appreciate the non-toothache. Breathing in, he writes, I am aware of my non-toothache. Breathing out, I smile at my non-toothache. Breathing in, I am aware of my health. Breathing out, I smile at my health. Breathing in, I am aware of my birth to capable, loving parents. <clears throat> in putting this sermon together, my mind whether I was controlling it or not, couldn't help but return time and time again to the question of race and class in America. And not so much to the underlying question of race and equality, as important as that is, but to the question of how we talk about race and equality in this country, or more to the point, how we don't talk about it so much as shout, preach, and glower at each other over it. And I wondered if we could each be mindful and aware of the role that luck plays in our lives, might we be better able to talk to each other about an issue like this? Or more importantly, better able to listen? I mean, my relative good fortune in life's lottery does not make me a better person. It also doesn't make me a less worthy person. It is simply part of who I am. It has made parts of my life easier than other people's. And I should acknowledge that reality and be grateful for it without being prideful about it. So, breathing in, I am aware that I am a white, straight, able-bodied man. Breathing out, I smile that I am a white, straight, able-bodied man. What I'm talking about, of course, is this thing that people call privilege, which is a term I don't particularly like for a lot of reasons, all of which are rhetorical, none of which go to the substance. But the main rhetorical reason I don't like it is because the immediate reaction of the people that it is aimed at is defensiveness. And when that defensiveness kicks in, conversation stops. So I wonder if those of us who are the target of the word, appropriately the target of the word, if our own mindfulness of our unearned good fortune at being born white and middle class in America might help us get past that defensiveness. You don't get credit for those advantages, but they also aren't anything to be ashamed of. They are gifts and they should be recognized with gratitude while we also look with honest hearts at the world and acknowledge that many of our fellow human beings did not receive such gifts. They are like the food in this morning's reading from Thich Nhat Hanh. He wrote that we can be happy to have such wonderful food, but we also suffer because we are capable of seeing that other people are not sharing the bounty. But when we see in this way, he writes, it makes us sane because the way in front of us is clear, the way to live so that we can make peace with ourselves and with the world. The way is clear, he says. I'm not quite so optimistic. I am not at all sure that the way in front of us is clear. I think the way is murky. We don't know but I also believe that Han has shown us the first few steps on the path. Accept and recognize and appreciate our own good fortune while recognizing and accepting that it is not shared by everyone. Now, will doing that make it easier for a bunch of middle class white folks to have a meaningful conversation with black Americans about race and justice in this country? I don't know. I mean, a conversation has to have two sides. 
And I don't know if the other side of that conversation would be ready for it. I have no idea. But we can't find out unless we take the chance. And I think it's a chance worth taking. It certainly couldn't hurt. It isn't going to make the conversation any harder. Besides, even if it doesn't pan out that way, we take the step, we try, we take the step down Hans' path, we don't know where it's going. We live in uncertainty. But there are still good reasons to do this. There are very good reasons to cultivate an awareness of the role that luck plays in all of our lives. First, a growing body of evidence suggests that seeing ourselves as self-made, rather than as talented, hardworking, and lucky, leads us to be less generous and public-spirited. But that's fixable. Because studies also show that if we are prompted to think about our luck, we will be more generous. In one study, participants were asked to sh share a positive experience with an interviewer, and they were given cash in exchange for their time. One group was told to list the factors beyond their control that led to that positive experience. One group was told to tell the interviewer what they did to bring about the positive experience. And one group was just told, tell us what happened. And then, when they were done, they were asked whether they would like to donate some of the cash they had just received to charity. The people who had been asked to identify the outside factors that had led to their positive experience gave 12% more than the control group, the people who had just been asked to tell what happened, and 25% more than the people who had been asked to say how they brought about the event. And then there's just the value of gratitude. A sense of gratitude not only tends to make us appreciate our own lives, but may, in fact, make our lives objectively better. So if you're going to have gratitude, don't do it for other people, do it for yourself. In one study, participants who were asked to keep a daily journal describing things that made them feel grateful, after 10 weeks had less frequent and less severe pain and improved sleep. They described themselves as more outgoing and compassionate and less likely to feel lonely and isolated. And in the end, this awareness of luck, of the role that chance and uncertainty plays in our lives, is a question of faith, especially in this faith. Luck is a strand in the interdependent web of existence. It is one of the things that ties us all together. We are all living lives of uncertainty with factors that we do not control. And sometimes, we're one of the factors controlling somebody else's life or affecting it. And we need to be aware of that. Doug Luder, who is a frequent contributor to the UU world, has a definition of faith that he put in a 2009 article. Our actions may succeed, he writes, or they may fail, or they may be completely irrelevant when the hurricane comes. If you know that and act anyway, confidently and yet with total awareness that anything at all can happen. That is what I am calling faith. And so, let us all be people of faith. Our actions, our generosity, affects this place and our ability to gather here every week <coughs> to our thoughts and ideas. And with that in mind, the offering will now be gratefully received.